Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I'm Doug, along with Brad. Hello. And this week, Brad went and got Final Fantasy VII because I'm so I am shocked you never played this game because we played a lot of these like old um, PlayStation N64 games. I'm shocked you never played this one. No, no, no. I played this game twice. What? Why are we I never about made it, it through it. <laughs> I never made it through it until yesterday. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> because yeah, I tr- I bought it back in like '98 or '99 or whenever it came out on my PlayStation. Yeah. And I think I made it to the end of disc one and went, okay, I don't know what to do. Yep. And then I got it again like two years ago when it was on Vita as a PS1 classic. Yep. And I made it probably about 60% of the way through and went, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for some and reason. And then I got it on PS4 and it was great. <laughs> and Brad, why was Final Fantasy VII so great on PS4? Because uh, it has cheats. <laughs> <laughs> I, that game has officially ruined every PlayStation 1 era RPG for me for the rest of my life. Because of... What what cheat specifically were you using? So, it has three. Um, <laughs> there was one... It has three. There was one that I used 100% of that game. There was one that I used occasionally when I was like, okay, we, let's get this moving. And then there was another one that I used, like, and one or two points, which we can talk about in a second. Yeah, yeah. So, the first cheat is the three times speed. So everything moves at three times the pace it should, <laughs> which means that like when you're just running through like random encounters that get really old and stale, yeah, yeah, those encounters now take upwards of ten to fifteen seconds from like screen flash to back into the world. So does it? But does it speed up the rest of the stuff too? Like talking to characters and stuff as well, or what? So some of the cutscenes are so any of like the full the full big cutscenes those don't do it. Yeah, those yeah. just like. It puts a little icon in the corner and just crosses out the icon and says, nope, you're not doing three times now. Gotcha. And then, like, any, like, in-town conversations, because it's all text bubbles in this game. That's what I was asking, it's, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, like, it will make, like, their text appear really quick, and you just hit X when you're done reading. Okay. So, it just speeds up the entire process, which I think, playing it through this way, I think it took me, like, 20-ish hours. Holy crap. Which, which again, like, my 60% that... And, again, having played, like, the first... 25 50 percent of this game two times before yeah yeah. obviously i kind of ran through that bit a little bit more but um just being able to do it there i think that's about where i got to the on my vita and i was at about 60 70 percent at 20 hours that's probably might even be a little high but yeah yeah. but it just it makes that experience so much better just because it's it's that drawn out like okay i'm just hitting these buttons and especially in this game some of those summons are some long animations yeah and some of those limit things are very very long especially when you get into the fact where you've got like several layers of them um yeah i, I, met, and, I remember back in the day those were like showcase pieces and now they're like oh that's quaint <laughs> yes it's like oh that is a very cool idea that you have doing there i'm sure when the remake comes out in 2028 it will look great yeah um but anyway, the other one that I used fairly frequently, and not a lot just because you end up being under-leveled, obviously, we do this, but when you're not, when I'm not kind of 100% sure where to go, you can turn on and off random encounters. Oh, wow. Holy crap. So, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, so there's, like, a couple dungeons where, like, you make a wrong left turn, and you're kind of going, you're, oh, I found something cool. Oh, God damn it. Now i got to run all the way back to the other spot yeah. so I can go to the right. And that whole process used to take you a half hour. You just click it, and you're, okay, I'm back where I should have been. Unclick it. All right, here we go. Let's keep going with this. Oh, that's clever. That's interesting. Yeah. And then, so those two those two are the two that I use almost, you know, kind of on and off the three the three times the whole time. And then the, in the random encounters, whenever I was kind of getting that, okay, I, I know what I need to do. Just let me do it. Yeah, yeah. It completely changes the way you think about playing one of these games because it's going, okay, you know what? All the downtime that you normally feel in a game like Final Fantasy VII, it's gone. Yeah. And that is my biggest complaint when I played it two years ago. Is it's just like, even on my Vita where it's like, I'm probably watching TV while I'm playing this. I'm still like, okay, yep. All right, let's fight another one of these yeah, things. Attack, magic, and it's going to take attack, three yeah. minutes to do. And now it's going, okay, this is quick. Let's move this through. So um, those helped a lot. The other one I only used, I used fairly sparingly throughout the game was, um, it's basically God mode. As soon as you click it, you have full health, full MP, full limit. Oh, okay. For all your characters. <laughs> that that one like, sounds so, like an actual cheat. The other ones are kind that's of like... The, that's the actual, like, cheat, which I did use once or twice where it was, like, that moment where you're, like, 20 minutes past the next save spot, and you're like, fuck, I'm going to die, and I'm going to have to do this whole part again. And I go, ah, yeah. oh, this feels bad, but <laughs> click, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you get over that real quick. <laughs> and, and you just click in the right thumbstick to do that, so it's one of those, like... Oh, it, that's oh, it? I just... 
I just bumped the right thumbstick. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. <laughs> That's dirty. It's kind of funny though. Actually, a lot of those things I would say, except for maybe the insta refill health stuff, is like they're definitely in a lot of like current turn based RPGs. So I don't think it's like totally unfair to throw that stuff in there now, especially yeah. the three times speed and stuff. Yeah, and again, I think just because those games were paced so differently twenty years ago yeah. than they are now. Um, it just it completely gives it that more modern feel of like okay like there's a pay, there's a better pace to this like I'm not constantly sitting around and waiting and I just I ultimately think it just kind of really changes that game and it's a yeah. game that I've always really liked like I never at no point was I sitting here going this story is boring this story isn't relevant the story is these characters aren't good yeah because they all are this is a great game I don't definitely not the best Final Fantasy game mm-hmm. but up there yeah um. And just the way that this kind of helps you move through the story almost makes it just a little bit better just because you do get that pace of going, okay, like I can keep track of like who everybody is. I know what else is going on. Whereas I think sometimes in some of these older JRPG games, you get to that, oh yeah, I remember you from like way back 15 hours ago yeah. in two weeks. So uh, it just, it completely changed the way this game played for me. And it completely changed kind of my perception of what old PlayStation games could be. And just thinking about how some of these are getting updated, uh, I just think it'd be really a good thing to throw into a lot of these games. So did you feel like the story, I guess, I guess moving past like the actual gameplay and stuff, did you feel like the story kind of like held up or, cause I I actually remember like when I played it, like sort of semi recently, kind of, I think, I think I also had on Vita. I bought all the Final Fantasy games, just never actually played them on Vita. (laughs) Um, Cause we've all been there. I think I just like the idea of having them on Vita, not actually playing them. Um, (laughs) But I remember playing a little bit of Final Fantasy VII, like, man, this story is like actually super weird. Like, it is an odd story from what I... I don't know if that, was, if that was the kind of feeling that you had gotten from it with, like, the whole genome and genosis and clones and not clones and all that other stuff. I don't know. How did you feel about the story? It, it is weird because it definitely has kind of a... It has a lot of, like, weird, like, who is this person? How is this person connected? Lots mm-hmm. of weird time things of going back and forth between time... Not timelines, but um, time periods. I... I think it holds up pretty well. I mean, you've got to go and expecting a little weird for every Final Fantasy story. Yeah. There's going to be that little bit of like, okay, right? <laughs> cool. I'm, I think I'm tracking what you're doing here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it, it sets up well, and I think it is a very, at its core, it's a very simple story. There's obviously tons of layers on top of it, but it's a, this very simple story of going, we need to get to Sephiroth. We need to stop yeah. him. And it is ultimately just that one big major bad guy now again there's so many different layers that start playing into that in terms of the corporations and genova and all this other stuff that are happening yeah. and the part we that... have to sort of lean over they might be terrorists but you know <laughs> i mean they're, they're, they're terrorists but they're doing it for good reasons because the corporations are just killing them all right, right now all right, and the right. corporations <laughs> are just they're killing everybody so yeah, yeah. avalanche has got to get them yep uh, <laughs> but but no, and I think, and I think there's always that that piece where you've got okay, you've kind of got the 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 independence fighters, the freedom fighters here going up against the big government, yeah. and you've got that. That's almost even pushed to the side when you get towards the end, where it's really just like okay, no, like Sephiroth's trying to like really screw some shit up here, like. Yeah. And I think just the whole time, just even trying to figure out like who Sephiroth is and what he's doing, and just how that's kind of pieced together through Cloud Story, I think it it still works really well. And again, I think part of that again being able to speed it up and keep track of it a little bit more just because there's a lot of like, okay, wait, is this the real cloud? Like when, when did the village burn or did it not burn? And there's lots of weird little things like that. And I think just being able to keep everything a little bit tighter, I think helps keep those connections better and helps keep your mind focused on those minor details that I think a lot of times in some of these big gigantic sprawling games, you almost not necessarily forget, but you kind of overlook over the course of forty or fifty hours. That's actually a good point. I never thought about that. That um, how the three because to me the three times speed was always more of a getting through random battles. I actually didn't think about story pacing. That's actually kind of interesting that how it can actually have a positive impact on the on the story um, because you do catch all that stuff. I do remember like the Final Fantasy games as a kid taking me like months to finish, and by the oh, end yeah. you're like, what? is that what is this like you, oh yeah you, you don't you miss that even as a kid like you barely understand what's going on and then the top of all the, <laughs> the top of like spraying that over like months of stuff and like talking about it at school and the kids at school don't quite understand it either that was more my experience with final fantasy 10 and i was like what the hell is sin i, I don't know man <laughs> yep i think i think that was prime time when that game came out for that kind of conversation yeah. for us but yeah and i think it just it does 
all of those cheats, they're the simplest things ever, yeah. but they just take an already great game and modernize it to the point where a lot of the faults that I had with it two or three years ago yeah. are are gone and eliminated because this modernizes it just enough yeah. without changing what it actually is to become something that I think is a little bit better. And I'm sure there's people out there who are going like, I can't believe you, blah, blah, blah. but I do think for somebody who's not like a huge, like PS one purist, like those are the greatest RPGs that ever existed. Yeah. There's amazing ones there, mm-hmm. but there's room for updating those. So I guess, I guess on that point, just kind of, to kind of like wrap it up. Cause I know a lot of people talk about final Fantasy seven in the past, so um how do you feel about i mean how do you feel about the remake i mean for me remakes i always like a much more liberal take like i'm super excited for the spyro one because they sort of took a lot of the inspiration from spyro and are changing up a lot of things um so i mean with the final Fantasy VII remake are you more excited for it now do you want it to be more true to the original games kind of like the version you played or do you want to see them take it off in a new direction like how do you feel about that uh i kind of go with like the shadow of Col- shadow of the colossus i think is one of the best remakes out there oh, okay where it is very very true to a lot of the things but they took it and went okay what are the things we can do to make this a 2018 game okay and i think that's what i want is i want final fantasy 7 and i want as close to that as you can get okay but still making it a 2027 game <laughs> <laughs> whatever that will look like <laughs> but is a 2027 game a can a console rpg be turn-based like is a 2027 rpg to, is not a, is not a turn-based and, game agreed to me though uh, see and that's and i think that's the weird part where it's like yeah. i i'm playing octopath traveler right now i love a good turn-based game yeah, yeah. like a lot I do think, though, that that's one of those things that I think will get shifted past, and I think that's one of those things where looking at Final Fantasy's 15s combat, um, even 13s, just some of those other more active battle systems that Final Fantasy has slowly started to integrate, I do think that's going to be there. I think that's going to, that needs to be there. Yeah. Um, and I think with the characters and the weapon sets that they do use in this, with it a lot of it being, okay, you've got the sword, you've got um, the gun arm, you've got a lot of things that I think would play well into that style of combat because a lot of the i think general ideas of it are similar to 15 in terms of weapon sets and how characters are fighting yeah okay so but you you'd be okay if they went a little bit less i would be yeah 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 i ideally for me no but i'm fine if they (laughs) (laughs) yeah no i'm actually i'm actually super excited for the thing and i kind of wish they would go honestly i just want them to do kingdom hearts combat and i know it's like blasphemy but (laughs) yeah i don't want that no yeah but that was before we actually got final fantasy 15 i was like oh that's what they would do never mind let's we can i can i'm okay now with a little bit turn based (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's elements you can keep in there yeah all right uh so i guess final thoughts on final fantasy 7 you liked it good game yeah third time's the charm (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right uh we are workforce gaming if you guys like what you heard you can always follow us at workforce gaming on twitter and subscribe to us on youtube or where else wherever else you're listening talk to you later